Hello there, thanks a lot for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard and today it's Duke Ellington, a towering giant in 20th century popular music, I don't need to tell you. And what's so fun is this is a vintage concert poster from kind of, I guess, the first decade they really started appearing a lot, the 1930s, uh, mid-30s is when they really started hitting, and this one is from the summer of 1933. Wow. So, you know, in the poster hobby, uh, we call a poster, rather than getting sunburned or faded, when it's had a lot of light, we call it toned. And this one certainly has, you know, it's about as toned as any poster can get through either fluorescent lights or sunlight. But, heavens, it is so old. As of this taping in 2017, this thing is 83 years old. Wow, so it is totally forgiven. I've had one major collector tell me he actually prefers it looking this way. He wants his poster to look almost 100 years old, and suntanned and everything else is just fine. But it was white once upon a time in the background, as you'll see from another example I'm going to show you in a moment. So that actually makes this a five-color poster, because you've got the white cardboard, black basics, yellow used prominently, blue for Duke's faces and other highlights, and the red in venue information up above in the white box. So five colors, but again, of course, largely the colors have been zapped, although still very present in muted form. And boy, the design of this thing, how interesting is this, especially for the 1930s? I mean, you've got five Duke Ellington faces on here, you know, at different angles and stuff. I, I just don't remember seeing that in any decade. It's really a nice artistic touch, and they take each Duke face and use it to emphasize one of his strong suits. So it's really clever that way. But we'll get to that in a second. Let's take it here from the top and the venue box, which have some pretty small type up there, so I'll zoom in. Only main appearance, it says in small print at the very top, then Ocean Pier in huge letters, and Old Orchard Beach again in that small font, which, by the way, is really a dated font. It just so smacks of the 1930s. This couldn't possibly be from the 40s onwards, but we know it is 1933. And uh, as far as the old Orchard Beach Pier, I have blogged a lot of big band posters from that venue and other concerts as well going forward into the 50s and so forth. Then on there, in the bigger print, it says Saturday evening, August 26th. And the fun part is safe for last. Check that out. 55 cents <laughs> till 7.30 to 7.30, get it right, Pete. And after 7.30, 99 cents. Holy cats, less than a dollar is the high price for this 33 poster. And then the body of the poster, the traveling tour blank portion. Well, you know, the dominant part is set off at quite an angle, as you can see. There's that artistic rendering of Duke's face, and underneath it, Duke Ellington and his famous orchestra. And then near his chin on the yellow, that small print is just business. It says management, Irving Mills of New York City. And then this just wonderful artistic flair of all these little Duke faces. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen, <laughs> I've never seen that in any other poster from any decade or whatever. It's just sort of unique. And it's just so neat the way the artist, you know, put, you know, one or two of Duke's strong suits under each face. It's just amazing. So. Taking them one at a time, starting with the top one, you do have Radio Pictures, which you and I know better as RKO, and signals Duke's involvement in movies. Then you've got the Cotton Club, two magical words on any Duke Ellington concert poster, the famous Harlem venue. Then the third face shares two things, Victor Records, <clears throat> excuse me, and NBC, and I guess they ran out of room for one more face, or felt both of those were just so self-explanatory. And then the last one, down there on the yellow, Paramount Palace Headliners, referring to the famous New York City venue in Times Square. And then wait, what's that in the lower right-hand corner? Did that catch your eye? Look at that near my fingers. Wow, can you believe it? Looks like a poster artist signed their work in the 1930s. That just doesn't happen. That is so unheard of. I was just blown away. Now, LEF is the best thing I can make out of that, L-E-F-F. -F. Possibly a T is in there as well. So, as I said, this was a tour blank with the venue box up above changing from night to night. And I actually have a photo of another one to show you, which is always very handy. We can, we can do that. And check this one out. The colors are much more intact, aren't they? And this is from 
amazingly, the night before the poster I'm showing you. Friday, August 25, in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and Bornhurst on the Canal. Wow. Dancing from 9 to 2 a.m. and admission $1. Now this photographic representation really helped me date this poster because I was playing with the 1930s and a couple of possible years, but guess what? Bornhurst on the Canal burnt down in 1934, so that eliminated 1939 as the other possible year, so voila, there's no question 33 is the Duke poster that I'm showing you. Oh, and by the way, you know what's really fun? <laughs> Duke's two most recent 78s, currently on the popular music charts at this very time, Stormy Weather and Sophisticated Lady. Oh man, holy cow, jeez. Now, as a fantastic kicker to this video, as cool at this, as this poster is, guess what it was followed up with the very next year, okay? So we're here in 33, and allow me to grab the 1934 masterpiece, which I've already blogged separately, that followed that. Take a look, you've seen this perhaps my other, you know, my other video, but another Art Deco masterpiece from the very next year, 1934. I have blogged this before from Scranton, Pennsylvania, so still, I couldn't resist just adding this in to show you how, um, you know, just how killer this era's Duke Ellington concert posters were. And look how identical the type fonts are up in the venue box. Just amazing, the exact same fonts and even similar wording. The 33 poster says, only main appearance, and this 34 says, positively, only New Hampshire appearance. Pretty darn cool. So, wowee, right? What can you say about these vintage Dukes? Wow, from, you know, what, half a decade before World War II even started, for heaven's sake, and just before the dawn of the swing era. So, just a marvelous piece. Unfortunately, back in an era when poster printers did not identify themselves on the poster, but hey, what a bonus we got with the poster artist Lef putting his or her initials on there. Okay, well, great pieces. Thanks a lot for dropping by Duke today, and uh, we'll probably be back to rock and roll or R&B next time, but I love to blog them all. Country, jazz, whatever. It's the greatest stuff gets put down for you to see. Appreciate your time. Have a good rest of your day, and take care. Bye-bye.